Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. And today's topic is how we can shift that mindset from victim to victory. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. We're making it possible for busy women to sculpt and tone in just 15 minutes a day. It's either great for beginners or stackable for advanced. So whether you're looking for a women's complete home gym, a free routine for consistency, or full guided workouts in our app, we've got you covered to really unleash your empowered self and step back into your confidence. So you can visit our store, bootybands.com, and subscribe so you get notifications for every episode that drops every Sunday. It's helping break the silence around abuse. And as I share my abuse story, she shared hers with me. And there's so much relation as far as when somebody opens up, it really allows you to start stepping into the healthier ways of handling abuse. And there are two ways that we can deal with, whether it's victim or victory. And so she guides us through today as we start to find our empowerment really coming through. So let's get started. Jim, I really connected with you when you said the words of, well, let's just go ahead and just skirt that one under the rug. And let's just go ahead and cover that one up. And let's just pretend that that one didn't happen. And let's just try to, you know, imagine that it's not really existing and it's really going on. I want to live this perfect fairy tale life. And so everybody around us, even my own family, even my own sister, even the closest people to me thought I was in a very healthy and stable relationship because I had to do that much covering up. And it just became a lie, a lie within myself, a lie that I couldn't really fully tell everybody what was really going on. And it wasn't until an explosion happened within about the third year, fourth year of our marriage, something around there, that uh, the police had to get involved. And, you know, it was in that moment that I thought to myself, I'm losing myself. I really am. Like, I, I have no idea who I am at this point. And I remember we were sitting in counseling and uh, the counselor said, you know what, I see approximately maybe six months left of this relationship. And in my mind, I thought I was going to be married to this man for the rest of my life. So it kind of shook both of us up to hear a doctor of our, you know, doctor of therapy or whatever he was at that time, say this to us and say, yeah, you got about six months left. And um, that was kind of a wake up call, I think, for him and for myself of like, wow, he's really seeing a very unhealthy relationship. And that was the moment that everything kind of started to tip over for us. Okay, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. How do you feel when you're losing yourself, when you are lying to cover up, when you are being caught in blood, like in the lowest and most vulnerable state? Don't you think at some point I'm losing myself, I have to do something about that? your mind starts to think, well, is there really the grass? Is it greener on the other side that, you know, people always say that marriage is tough. And so is this the tough that I'm supposed to be going through? So I think there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of, you know, areas of grayness that you're not fully understanding that marriage should not be that tough, right? When we say that marriage should be tough, it's, it's a whole different level. Like it should not be I need to change myself, hide myself, continue to keep lying to everybody that things are going on. And so when you feel like you've completely lost yourself, you don't know who you are anymore, that is not normal. And I think when society has made that to be normal, because we just hear in our belief system, we hear, oh, it should just be tough, you know? No, 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 (laughs) it should not. It actually should be easy. And The way that we actually go about our lives should be focusing on how can it be easy? How can it be simple? How can I be madly in love? Those are the things that it should be towards, but not the other way. Yeah. So Danita, what has been the shift in consciousness when at some point in time there is like, I have to heal. I have to address it. I have to look at it in the eyes and say it for what it is. I have to to live in one way or another and something good because I'm not going to live all my life with all that kind of shit, quote unquote. Yeah, uh, well, a couple things, and I will start with this one. Um, this is the one that's been the most powerful is your mind is extremely powerful um, to the point that we haven't even tapped into the potential that we really have with our mindset. And what happens is we are creating our life through our thoughts. And after our thoughts, it becomes the words. And after our words becomes our deeds or actions, whatever you want to call it. And that literally becomes our life and our reality as we know it. 
I was in so much misery that I didn't really realize that I was actually manifesting my future because I was in so much of my darkness that I would go hide out in a room, close myself off. I would shut the door, lock it. And I would just sit in there and I would imagine the most perfect place, the most perfect relationship and just the most perfect future. And I just kept replaying it over and over and over in my mind. And the reason why I did it is because it, it, it brought me some sort of joy in that moment, realizing that I could almost in a weird way escape to my fantasies and my, my, my daydreaming. And I didn't realize about five years later, I'm actually sitting in my fantasy. Oh my gosh, I had no idea how powerful our minds really are. So you did it without knowing the consequence of doing it. You did it for the sake of getting to a pure joy place at, at least a few minutes, sometimes a few hours. Danita, I did exactly the same. I did not know what I was doing. For one year, I dreamt of real love. I imagined, I felt it in my body. I was making myself madly in love. Your thoughts are so powerful. If you're telling yourself that you can't break free, then you're right. If you're telling yourself that you're going to be stuck forever, then you're right. If you're telling yourself that you have the ability to find and meet true love, then you're right. You know, I really want to go into this, Gemma, today, the word victimhood, because it can be very caught when we hear the word abuse, we can all raise our hand and say we've been abused. And but then at the same time, we say, are we still a victim? Because if we're still living in victimhood, that's our choice. That's our decision to stay in victimhood, because yes, we can be abused, but it's our decision if we want to break free of being in that victim state of mind. These teachings are the ones who gave me back my own power, who empowered me during this healing and transformation journey. Interesting how our minds work and create everything. For those that are listening, like once you've hit being a victim, now it's the next step is to empower yourself. And how you do that is to truly look at yourself and go, where are my areas that I need to level up? How do I realize that I have the power to now take control over my future? Because we either have control over the future or we have zero control over the future. And that zero control is when we turn into that victimhood. So taking control over it by starting to just now think and daydream what you really want. That's the first step to breaking victimhood is start creating. Create an idea. What does it look like to you? A challenge for all those that are listening right now. If you're feeling stuck. Ideas are the first step to get yourself unstuck. Why? Because it's the thought process that is the first step to starting to manifest. It's like this. When you go and jump into an Uber and, you're, and the Uber driver goes, where do you want to go? And you're like, anywhere but McDonald's. Then Uber is going to go, okay, I guess we're going to go anywhere but McDonald's. Because if we're not clear, if we don't have a very distinct vision of what we want, that's how the universe works as well. It's going to take us through all these different routes. But what we do is we go through our experience of what we don't want anymore. I think that is a very valuable advice and, and everybody just follow this advice because this is just factually true, proven times and times again. You can have anybody. We're all going to confirm. Yes, this is the way to go. You start by an idea. And this is why we do this show, to give you the idea that it is possible. We understand where you are at. We have been there too. Come together and dream a better life with more love, with more time, no pressure and more than enough money and simplicity, good health. And now you start to really from abstract to concrete, not just you want more. It's true. At the beginning, when I just came out of 15 years of domestic violence in 2013, my third last in room husband, I was, we were not married at that time, he told me, you are going to stop saying that you have been victim for 15 years of domestic violence. Now you're going to change your wording and say, I am victorious over 15 years of domestic violence. Hey, that change of words empowered me and has been empowering me every single day. And what does victory mean to you? That's a big question. I really oh. like that. I'm writing that down. Victory instead of victimhood. I think that's oh, such yeah. a, a phenomenal one to definitely shift. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes a little bit because remember, 
we are built on what's called neuroplasticity. We are, we are caught in a loop. We have 60 to 70 thoughts in a day and 90% of them are on repeat. We are built off of repetition. And all it takes to break that pathway is the first step to have awareness that you're in that loop. That's the first step is just awareness. The second step is to then catch yourself. When you are doing a particular thought on repeat, catch yourself and say something different, just like Gemma just said. So if you're saying to myself, I've been a victim for 15 years, catching yourself and saying, I'm a victory of abuse, switching that can be just the first step to break that neuroplasticity loop, that cycle, that trend that puts us back into that consistency of why we continue to keep attracting the same thing over and over. It doesn't matter if it's relationships. It doesn't matter if it's finances. It doesn't matter if it's your health. Whatever it is that you are constantly finding struggle with, ask yourself, what are you saying to yourself? Because again, 90% of everything's on repeat. So when you start to change things, you'll realize that you are the maker of everything that you've created. So when you can start changing those things, you'll start to be able to get a different outcome. And that was my biggest fear. And this is why I'm convinced that I would continue to attract a third one the same way. It would just not get better. I did lose hope for a better future. I started to really believe like that is the end. It's just going to be that way forever, whatever. And this is when I decided thinking that way, the logical next thought is let's exit that life. It's not worth it. And I planned my suicide. So grateful for God to wake me up that day and stop me in my track. But the fact is that what you say is absolutely 100% the truth. What you believe is what is true for you and what will prove to be true in your experience. So choose what you believe. Is that serving you? Do you like it? Is, this really, is that really the, 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 the meaning of life? That, that no man can be trusted, is that really the meaning of life? Do you really think that is so important for you that you have, you have to keep that so, so deep, deep, dear to, to your heart? Or can you actually realize that actually a few men, when I was young, could not be trusted? Therefore, this is the only thing I see. And coming to realization and to start to really think, okay, so how it would be if, what if that would not be true? What if maybe some women could not be trusted either? What if some men could be trusted? The next step to healing is really obviously letting go and forgiving. I read a book, it was called 28 Days to Self-Love. And one of the pages, I was, I was flying through this book. I was like on, I was on day 20. And I had eight days left and it was easy. I'm like, I got this. All, every single page was good, except for the 20th day. It said, what is a, what is a positive thing from your ex? And my whole body just broke out into a hot sweat. And I just, I remember I was just sitting there with my pen shaking, my knee was shaking and every part of me just wanted to be in hatred because it kept the victimhood alive when I could hate him. But when I had a release to love, it was a whole different experience for me. And this is what happened. I wrote down a few things about what I really did like about him. And all of a sudden, as my heart softened and opened up, I realized it had nothing to do with him. But the current relationship that I was in, it started to open that up. My heart started to release and open up to the love of my life that was in front of me. And that to me was a big wake up call that when we are holding on to anger and that guilt or shame or whatever it is, and if we don't go into forgiveness and letting go, then there is a, a part of us that's not fully being able to release to our fullest potential of love and abundance and all these things. My recommendation is not to go to your perpetrator or your abuser, uh, but when you find that forgiveness is when we let go. It also goes back to, I mean, I, I deal with a lot of uh, women that have been through a lot of abuse in the, when they were little, and they didn't have any control over the abuse at all that happened. So the first step to understand is that hurt people hurt people. 
That's the first thing to realize is that an abuser was probably abused themselves. When we are able to release and go into forgiveness, let go of that anger, then we can now break the chain of abuse that you may actually be doing that you have no idea to. When we go into gratitude, our heart immediately opens up into a love vibration and that is where we start to attract the love that we deserve, the abundance that we are meant to have and the health that we are also meant to have. Wow, Danita, you bring enlightenment to our community. Thank you. Everything you say is true. It's boiled down to the most understandable piece of advice that Danita does right here, right now. It's making it understandable even when you are at your rock bottom, in your deepest negative bias. When you understand that opening up an ID, creating another reality, delving into the great feeling of a good life, going into gratitude, releasing hate to call in love, that doesn't mean go back to your ex. That doesn't mean that. This is not what we say. We are talking about your own sense, your own being, your own attraction point, because you are the attractor, you are the magnet. And from then, from there, you bring forth your miracles, your blessings, and your demise. You choose. Danita, thank you so, so much. I see booty bands and bubbles. We are going to put all in the, in the description of this episode, all ways to reach out to you, to join community members, everything. So tell us again, what can people expect from you in terms of service, of company, of amazing things that you're doing? We definitely encompass the fitness on more of a holistic, vast, uh, macro-looking uh, scale rather than very um, micro-looking. So what we've done is mostly with women that are over the age of 30, where they're starting to notice their metabolism slowing down. And what happens is we're losing three to 5% of our muscle mass every decade after the age of 30. It's especially important for women because we don't have a lot of muscle mass to begin with. And so that's why it's very detrimental that women start to lift weights or use resistance bands. That's one of the two ways that you can start to build back that lean muscle, which helps speed your metabolism. And that helps obviously keep the curves and cuts the fat, right? So we, we do this on a level where we help with the mindset part if they're stuck in something, whether it's victimhood or abuse has happened and they don't think that they're worth a good body or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We teach them how they can live a very healthy and abundant life by working from the inside out. And so all of our products really just are about having a home gym. We also have broken it down to even 15 minute workouts. So for those that say they don't have time or they don't have energy, they're too tired. We bring it into a 15 minute workout where we combine, it's a busy booty blueprint. You can stack them on top of each other and make it a 30 minute workout if you want, or you keep it down to the 15 just so we can focus on consistency first. So our name is Booty Bands and Barbells. Um, we've been doing this for five years. We're passionately doing it to help women. When you buy any products, you will actually have a free call with a coach where she'll be actually speaking to you one-on-one -on -one about how you can reach your goals faster. So, so happy to hear all of that. Oh, thank you. Going to explore more about boot events and bubbles and see how I can get one. So thank you very much for being here today and um, looking forward to continuing these wonderful conversations with you. Of course. Thank you. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.